Hello, my name is Emma Jean, and this is my story. My husband Walter and I have been married for 30 years and living in our small beloved town of 500 for 20 of those years. We could have chosen to live anywhere, but we both grew up in small towns and we wanted the same for our family. It's the Friday before Memorial Day, and I'm sitting on my front porch listening to nature and enjoying my tea. We have been blessed with a very successful fertilizer business located in the bigger city over. By small town standards, we're considered well off, but I like to say we're blessed. The accomplishment I'm most proud of are our three sons. Walt Jr., the oldest, was a football and baseball star at the local high school. He's now married to his high school sweetheart with a family of his own. He's currently the general manager in the family business. I'm glad he lives nearby because I get to see my two grandkids often. I get a kick out of it when they call me mama. Jeff is 20 and is a sophomore in college about an hour away. We're so proud of him. Jeff wasn't an athlete like Walt Jr., but he was valedictorian. He called today to say he'd be coming home for the holiday weekend. He tries to call me every Sunday after church just to say hello. I hope he knows that those few minutes of conversation make my week so much brighter. Now, our youngest, J.W., is 18 and looks mostly like me. He has my blue eyes, and my daddy used to say they reminded him of the ocean. J.W. just graduated from high school, and we're not sure about his college plans. I suppose we'll know more as the fall draws closer. Is that a motorcycle? All he talks about are motorcycles. He's loved them since he was a kid. W did share with me an interesting conversation he recently had with J.W. Come in. Dad, I have two friends who just graduated with me, and we have a great idea for business. It's a motorcycle shop. We've been talking about it for months, and we have found the perfect location. We each need to come up with our share of the deposit for the lease on the building. Well, son, I'm sure that you and your friends are very passionate about this, and I'm sure that you've got some great ideas. But you also need to understand that this is a business, and, and businesses, you know, for someone to loan you money, you know, businesses are gonna take a three to five year plan. Now, we're not looking to get a loan from a bank, Dad. We're looking to get a loan from our parents. <laughs> Son, if I loan you the money, then I'm the bank. You know, we've got to get a business plan. Sounds to me like you and your friends need to go to school, you know, and get your four-year degree in business. Oh, wait four years? No, no, no! You're not listening to me! I'm not talking about going back to college. What about my college fund money? That's my money, right? Son, let me tell you. That money was set up for you to go to college or until your 25th birthday. That's the way we set it up. That's the way it's going to be. Dad, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why you're being so unfair. That's my money to have, not yours to give. I should be able to use it however I want to. Son, listen. There's a lot you don't understand about finances, business. Listen, you're only 18 years old. Man, I'm your father. That's what I'm here to teach you. I've always tried to teach you boys one thing. You've got to either go to college or you've got to learn the family business. Hey, when you, your mom and I started that, that, that fertilizer business, we worked day in, day out. Your mom worked 12 hours a day. She had sometimes three jobs. It took us two years to make a profit. So what you've got to understand is you've got to go to school, learn the business, and you've got to start at the bottom and work your way to the top. Son, trust me on this. Come on, let's go back to the party. Now about my beloved small town, I feel like we've grown up together. Most people don't think that small towns have a lot to offer, but we have everything we need right here. Most of our stores are located on Main Street. We have our doctor's office, grocery store, gas station, and a pharmacy. We have a bank and the post office, and of course our schools. Most of us don't lock our doors or have alarms. There's just no need. We don't have strangers here. Our small town is friendly, very protective, and usually quiet, except during football season. Football, the heart of our small town. Oh, we stay for hours cheering for the home team. When football season starts, all other problems, at least on Friday night, disappear. 
All that matters is winning the game and making it to the playoffs. Jeff and Walter will be home for dinner soon. As for holiday plans, Walt Jr. and his family will be spending the holiday at his in-laws, and J.W. has plans to go to the beach with his girlfriend and her family. I have no special plans but to enjoy a nice, quiet weekend. But that would all change after the sun went down. It was around 4 a.m. and I was sleeping peacefully. I didn't hear the sound of the back door open or close. I never heard footsteps creep upstairs. I didn't even hear the door to Jeff's room open. The first thing I heard was a After a moment of confusion, I got up and locked the door. While still standing with my back to the door, I heard voices in the hallway. As my heartbeats got faster, I reached for my Bible on the nightstand. This was the Bible given to me by my mother before my wedding almost 30 years ago. This was the same Bible that comforted me in my time of sorrows and renewed my faith when in doubt. And now I needed it more than ever. There was something familiar. Oh, those were my eyes looking back. So I reached out my hands and slowly began lifting his mask. As family and friends said their final goodbyes on that dreary day in the town's oldest church, the rumors had already begun about the intruder who took the lives of me, my husband, and my son in our home. The town wanted to know, how did this stranger find our small town? Would he come back? The town wondered when this stranger would be caught, or would the truth be buried just as we were today? Police detectives were everywhere asking questions of neighbors and family members. But with no solid leads, rumors began to spread, and in a small town, rumors can spread like wildfire in the dry summer heat. Real fear set in, and the people in the town began locking their doors, some for the very first time. They began paying special attention to people driving through town, and even started looking at their neighbors differently. Parents no longer thought it safe for the kids to walk alone or play in the park. 
not until this stranger was caught. To everyone's surprise, this person who they called a stranger wasn't a stranger at all. As it turned out, he had gone to their school. He dated their daughters and attended their football games. And worst of all, he killed his own family. The town who had once grieved with him now hated him. J.W. gave a full confession and was sentenced to life in prison. The nightmare of not knowing was finally over, but the reasons why, J.W. would keep to himself. But there was also another forgotten victim on that quiet night. This victim didn't get a final goodbye ceremony and no one confessed to this crime. The victim I'm speaking of is my beloved small town. Their doors are no longer unlocked. Trust in their neighbors has been shattered and that feeling of safety would never be the same. Who would pay for this loss of innocence? But even with the passing of time, people still remember what happened to my family on a quiet night in a small town after the sun set. As for me, I just wonder, when J.W. looks into the mirror, does he see my eyes looking back? Thank you.